some time passed, and Chi Yul's group was still navigating the dungeon. Ju He was extremely angry with Jin Wu for making an incredibly reckless decision. They had no idea what might happen next because the risk of a double dungeon was substantial. In Jin Wu's mind, he owed his current life to Ju He's healing. Then, Ju He softly asked Jin Wu if he regretted his decision now. Jin Wu apologized to Ju He, admitting his regret. Upon hearing this, Ju He smiled and expressed her desire to go on a date with him after they finished the dungeon. Jin Wu had to treat Ju He to a meal as an apology. Huh? Finally, they arrived in front of the boss's room. Upon entering, a blue fire torch surrounded them, yet there was neither a monster nor a boss. The room was filled with many statues at the edges, carrying various weapons, including musical instruments. Confused by the eerie and peculiar atmosphere, the hunters observed. Chi Yul noticed a magical circle and commands inscribed there. The first command was to respect the god, the second to praise the god, and the third to worship the god. Those who failed to obey these commands would not leave alive. While the hunters were focused on Chi Yul reading the commands, suddenly, Ju He felt afraid, sensing that an enormous statue was staring at the hunters. Shortly after, the door to the boss's room closed, leaving the hunters puzzled about what was happening. Then, one hunter wanted to leave because of fear, but as he reached the door, It turned out that all the statues could move, and their situation was now precarious. Shocked, Jin Wu was witnessing what had just transpired. The hunter instantly killed by the statue was likely of D rank. If all the statues could move, it meant Ju He's concerns weren't mere hallucinations. As Jin Wu slowly turned to look at the eyes of the enormous statue,俺は今までに何度も死の瀬戸際に立たされてきた。つもののナイフが生成。それが壊れれば素手で立ち向かうしかない。人生初のレイドでみんなと歯ぐれて遭難してしまった。生き延びるため隙を伺い、周囲深く
But unfortunately, Jin Wu did not understand the meaning of praise the god. Then one hunter dared to try to carry out the second commandment. Unfortunately, the hunter was immediately stepped on by the boss because his worship did not comply with the dungeon rules. The other hunters panicked and ran to save themselves. Jin Wu immediately took Ju He as far away as possible from the boss's steps. Then Park tried to approach one of the armed statues there, and he died instantly from the statue's attack. Jin Wu continued thinking about the meaning of the second commandment. He couldn't leave Ju He alone. After Jin Wu saw the types of statues there, he realized that the instrument statues might be the answer to the second commandment. Jin Wu immediately shouted to tell the hunters to stand in front of the instrument statues. But when Jin Wu reached the instrument statue, the statue did not play its music. Of course, Jin Wu immediately ran to another instrument statue because one statue could only be occupied by one person. Ju He was safe now, and the boss was chasing Jin Wu. Unfortunately, Jin Wu had mistakenly chosen a statue there. Fortunately, Jin Wu managed to avoid the statue's attack, although he was severely injured. Jin Wu tried his best to move, and finally, he reached the instrument statue. The boss no longer pursued the hunters, and he returned to his king's chair. Ju He immediately approached Jin Wu, and she saw Jin Wu's leg was severed due to the boss's stomp. Then Ju He tried her best to heal Jin Wu's leg. But Jin Wu said that Ju He didn't need to push herself anymore. Shortly afterward, Ju He's face was covered in blood because she could no longer heal Jin Wu. After the completion of the second commandment, there was no immediate threat from the statues in the room. The hunters rested while debating among themselves. Many hunters had fallen victim in the room, and now only six hunters remained. Chi Yul, Kim, Ju He, Jin Wu, and two others. Kim blamed Chi Yul for leading them into this dangerous dungeon. However, other hunters disagreed, pointing out that Kim was the one who initially agreed to enter when the voting began. Then Chi Yul stated that he would take responsibility for his negligence as the group leader. Shortly afterward, the boss summoned an altar in the middle of the room. Jin Wu mentioned that this was the third commandment, worship the god. The likely meaning of this commandment was to test the loyalty of the boss's followers. If they were loyal, they would become offerings to the boss. Kim raised his sword towards Chi Yul, insisting that he should be the one to take responsibility for the incident. Despite the other hunters asserting that Chi Yul was not at fault, Kim still wanted Chi Yul as the offering. Chi Yul decided to approach the altar alone, but nothing happened to him. Instead, a red flame ignited in the circle of the altar. Upon seeing this, Jin Wu felt that the offering was not meant to sacrifice someone. Because of that, Jin Wu asked for help from the other two hunters to carry him to the altar. When they reached the altar, three more red flames ignited. However, Jin Wu still didn't understand the meaning of the third commandment. Waiting for assistance from outside would expose them to further threats from the boss. Worse yet, if they waited for more than seven days, the gate would break, causing a dungeon break. This meant that the terrifying boss would attack the city. Jin Wu then invited Kim and Ju He to join at the altar, and red flames matched the number of remaining hunters. Once they were at the altar, blue flames suddenly surrounded them, and the entrance opened again. The blue flames gradually disappeared, and each statue approached them slowly. Jin Wu tried to gaze at some statues, and they stopped moving. Therefore, Jin Wu instructed the hunters to take turns looking at each statue. This way, the statues would not approach them. Unfortunately, after some time passed, one hunter there gave up because of a mental attack. Eventually, she couldn't withstand staring at the statues and left the room. Even another hunter followed her and exited the room. The door closed slowly if the red flame extinguished as the number of hunters at the altar decreased. Initially, Kim also wanted to leave, but Jin Wu restrained him. With fewer hunters at the altar, the risk of death increased as the statues surrounding them continued to approach. The blue flame signaled the third commandment, and if the hunters could keep staring at the statues continuously, they would be safe. Unfortunately, this theory was not entirely correct, there was a possibility they might be trapped again inside. Then, Kim admitted that he honestly didn't expect Jin Wu, the world's weakest hunter, to bring them safely to this point. Despite that, Kim still wanted to go home and meet his family. He didn't want to die, and this was his chance to get out of the dungeon. Therefore, Kim thanked Jin Wu, dropped his sword, and ran towards the entrance. Of course, Jin Wu was angered by Kim's words. Jin Wu tried his best to gaze at each statue, which was getting closer to the altar. Jin Wu cried because he still wanted to live and fulfill his family's financial responsibilities. Then, Chi Yul instructed Ju He to take Jin Wu out of there. The door wouldn't close as long as one person remained at the altar. Chi Yul prioritized their safety because they were still young, and their life struggles were still long. 
but when Ju He tried to carry Jin Wu, suddenly her legs felt weak and couldn't move at all. After realizing this, Chi Yul suspected that Ju He was almost out of mana from healing Jin Wu's leg earlier. Because of that, Jin Wu decided to stay at the altar, and Chi Yul had to carry Ju He out of the dungeon. Chi Yul initially argued with Jin Wu, but in reality, only Chi Yul could carry Ju He. Then Ju He suggested staying there so that Jin Wu could survive. However, Jin Wu didn't agree with it and gave Ju He a crystal he obtained. It was the cost of treating Ju He to a meal and asking Ju He to eat first when she was outside. Chi Yul hit Ju He's neck because they didn't have much time left to think of another way. Jin Wu was grateful because he was the last sacrifice and could save Ju He and Chi Yul, who had been very kind to him. Finally, Jin Wu was alone there and would die soon. Jin Wu regretted not having life insurance. Then Jin Wu quickly took Kim's sword and prepared to fight the statues. At least, Jin Wu wanted to take one statue down with him. The statues then began torturing Jin Wu slowly. In Jin Wu's mind, he had always been the weakest among the other hunters, always underestimated and ridiculed by others. Honestly, Jin Wu truly wanted to become strong to survive. He worked hard every day and risked his life, but all his hard work had no results because he was the weakest hunter. Kim, a selfish man who only cared about himself. It wasn't just him who wanted to get out of this dungeon. Jin Wu also wanted to go home and meet his family. Those who had advantages always thought of themselves. <laughs> On the other hand, Song Yi went to school as usual and met her best friend, Jin Ah, Jin Wu's younger sister. Song Yi knew that Jin Wu was a hunter, so she was determined to become better than him. After school, Jin Ah visited the hospital as usual to visit her mother. <laughs> After the incident, Jin Wu, who had been unconscious for three days, woke up in a hospital that caters to hunters. Jin Wu was confused about the situation he was in. He also checked his legs and found that they had returned to normal. Jin Wu thought that it might just be a dream. Soon after, Wu Jin Chol and Kang Tasik from the Korean Hunters Association entered Jin Wu's room to inquire about something. But before that, Jin Wu asked about the condition of Chi Yul and Ju He. Jin Chul said that Chi Yul's condition was improving, although he had lost one hand. However, Chi Yul would likely retire if he wished. Meanwhile, Ju He would remain under hospital supervision to recover from her trauma, and there was a possibility she wouldn't continue her work as a hunter. Jin Chul explained that only six hunters survived the double dungeon incident. Massive massacres like this were rare. The Korean Hunters Association and Guild White Tiger quickly arrived at the location mentioned by the surviving hunters. But there was no boss room as described. Only a narrow ordinary dungeon corridor was found, with Jin Wu unconscious. No bodies of the hunters were left there. Jin Chul speculated that Jin Wu had undergone a second awakening or reawakening since he was the only one left in the dungeon. Reawakening sometimes happened to specific hunters and could result in a higher rank than before. Jin Chul had brought a crystal to measure Jin Wu's power ranking. In Jin Chul's opinion, at least in a rank or S rank hunter could have completed such a dungeon. If Jin Chol's assumption that Jin Wu experienced a reawakening was correct, the case would be considered resolved. However, the measuring device showed only the number 10, indicating that Jin Wu remained an E-rank hunter. This made the incident extremely mysterious, as the dungeon disappeared without leaving a single corpse. The Korean Hunters Association then left Jin Wu's room. <laughs> Then, Jin Wu wondered why the Korean Hunters Association didn't see the notification window in front of him. He tried to touch the notification window, but it wasn't a touch screen. Shortly after, Jin Ah visited Jin Wu with deep concern. 
Jin Ah scolded Jin Wu for always getting severely injured after completing raids. Determined to make Jin Wu quit his profession as a hunter, Jin Ah even threatened to quit school and take up work to support their living expenses. Then, Jin Wu suddenly asked Jin Ah, Can you see this? When there's an unread message in a game, how do you open it? After Jin Ah left, Jin Wu continued to contemplate the new system he had received. This system worked with Jin Wu's voice alone, and he attempted to open the daily quest commanded by the system. The title of the daily quest was Training to Become Strong. 100 push-ups, 100 curl-ups, 100 squats, and running 10 kilometers. If Jin Wu didn't complete the daily quest, he would face penalties. Initially, Jin Wu thought the system was just a dream, so he slept to avoid encountering it again. On the other side, Jin Chul reported his investigation results about Jin Wu to Gun Hee. The Korean Hunters Association had never dealt with a case like this for years. Gun Hee decided to classify this case as a special one for further investigation. In the Hunters Guild building, Choi Jong and selected Cha Ha in to be an instructor for the next B-ranked dungeon raid, including new recruits. Initially lacking confidence, Cha Ha in was convinced by Choi Jong in who considered her a reliable hunter. Cha Haiyan only needed to fight as usual and guide the new hunters. Although Hunter's Guild was one of the five major guilds in Korea, it lacked high-ranking hunters. Choi Jong and aimed to improve the guild's combat capabilities. At night, a gate appeared in the middle of the road, causing traffic jams. Hours later, Jin Wu, now awake, was transferred to a desert as his punishment. Soon after, a giant poisonous centipede appeared behind him. The system indicated that Jin Wu had to survive there for four hours. Since that incident, Jin Wu began following the daily quest commands from the system. On the other hand, Ju He received a call from her guild leader to join a D-rank raid at a gate that had recently appeared in various parts of the city. Understanding Ju He's situation, the guild leader allowed her to decline the offer and informed her that Jin Wu was awake in the hospital. Happy to hear this news, Ju He went to the hospital to visit Jin Wu. However, something bothered her as she still thought about the incident. Hearing the nurses talk about Jin Wu, Ju He learned that he ran around the hospital every morning, ignoring the nurses' advice not to overexert himself. <laughs> One thing Jin Wu understood was that the status window in front of him was genuinely real. He also received a skill recovery reward that could restore his body's condition. Jin Wu began studying the system he possessed, including character status, points, inventory, skills, level, etc. All these systems were exactly like those in a game. The higher he leveled up, the stronger Jin Wu became. He also received a random box as a reward after completing quests, usually containing useless items. However, this time, Jin Wu obtained an instant dungeon key from the random box. In the evening, Jin Wu visited his mother, who had been hospitalized for years. He recalled an incident four years ago when his mother suddenly fainted. After bringing her to the hospital, the doctor diagnosed her with eternal slumber, caused by the appearance of gates and magic monsters. This symptom could occur when an ordinary human was exposed to a mana-emitting hunter for an extended period. Eternal slumber could drain the victim's life energy, and there was no cure other than prolonging the patient's life. Due to this, Jin Wu worked even harder to support his mother's treatment and his sister's education. One day, Jin Wu felt something different while working. Upon checking with the Korean Hunters Association, he discovered that he had experienced his first awakening as an E-rank hunter. Despite the discrepancy between his expectations and reality, Jin Wu was determined to become stronger. He then went to an underground station to try the instant dungeon key, equipped with everything and ready to escape if anything dangerous happened. 
After opening his first instant dungeon door, it suddenly closed on its own, surprising Jin Wu. A notification window appeared, stating that Jin Wu had obtained a teleportation stone to exit the instant dungeon. From this point, Jin Wu understood that the instant dungeon was a different dimension from Earth. He had to fight the monsters there alone, without a party or anyone's assistance. Jin Wu couldn't leave until he completed the instant dungeon, except by using the teleportation stone. Jin Wu then started exploring the instant dungeon and fought against three goblins. Jin Wu successfully defeated them, exceeding his expectations. However, shortly after, a wolf above his level appeared, and Jin Wu tried to withstand its attacks. Unfortunately, Jin Wu's dagger broke, and he realized that the strength of the monsters depended on the color of their names. Then, Jin Wu's legs suddenly couldn't move. Despite not experiencing trauma after that incident, he still felt fear. <laughs> Finally Jin Wu began to control his fear, and now he had to kill the wolf. The wolf continues to attack Jin Wu, and Jin Wu needs a weapon to fight it. There was no party or healer beside him and he had to survive. Then Jin Wu remembered that he still had Kim's sword at that time. So he opened his inventory, took out Kim's sword, and killed the wolf. The wounds on Jin Wu's body recovered after level up, and several wolves appeared to fight Jin Wu there. As long as Jin Wu has a weapon, he can defeat the wolves. Then the remaining wolves ran away because they were scared. Jin Wu took advantage of this to rest for a while and increase his status points. He became more confident because the wolves were not as scary as the boss at that time. He didn't expect that it could become stronger than the previous one. Then Jin Wu tried to look for a magic stone in one of the wolf corpses there. But Jin Wu didn't see any magic stones, instead he got an item dropped from the wolf. Because of this, Jin Wu tried to open the shop menu and sell these items. Jin Wu has 20 gold and he doesn't know whether that gold is equivalent to real money. But Jin Wu didn't think too much about that because the gold he got would only be small change like he ranked dungeons in general. Not long after, the wolf that ran away earlier apparently brought other wolves to attack Jin Wu. Of course, Jin Wu's determination to fight grew stronger even though he had to kill many wolves. On the other hand, Juhi receives a call from the guild to take part in a sudden raid in the city. There has been a dungeon break and the guild still needs healers to help the party. After hearing this, Juhi was forced to participate even though she still had trauma. Let's go back to Jin Wu who killed the wolves. Jin Wu also gets the title of Wolf Assassin, where he gets an additional 40% of all abilities to fight animal type monsters. Jin Wu got various items, weapons, and a wanderer's robe. He also got another teleportation stone from the monsters there. Initially, Jin Wu wanted to go home, but he didn't understand the instant dungeon system there. If he left without defeating the boss, would there be a dungeon break too? But it is possible that the instant dungeon will disappear like an event in an MMORPG game. What's more, there is no guarantee for Jin Wu to get an instant dungeon key like this again. Jin Wu felt that he was being played by something he knew nothing about. He didn't know who gave him a second chance at life, and where the game system came from. It was as if Jin Wu was like a pawn in their game. Then Jin Wu decided to continue exploring the instant dungeon, raised his level, and all the monsters there had changed color to white. That meant Jin Wu's level was already higher than them. Red means very strong. The orange color means equal or slightly higher than Jin Wu. White means weaker. Then Jin Wu decided to go deeper, which might be where the boss was.
Several minutes passed. Jin Wu arrived at a room where there were no monsters. Jin Wu's instincts grew stronger because he had added points to the status. Not long after, a large snake appeared which hit Jin Wu's body quickly. Jin Wu stood back up holding Kim's sword which had been broken in half. The snake boss has an orange name. Jin Wu also saw that the snake boss had poison in its fangs and scales that were difficult for swords to penetrate. Jin Wu really had a hard time fighting the poisonous snake boss, but he had to be more determined and improve his way of fighting. Jin Wu is known as the number one weakest hunter, but he doesn't want to be underestimated by anyone anymore. Finally, Jin Wu managed to kill the poisonous snake boss and got a good dagger. C rank dagger with paralyzing and poison effects will reduce HP 1% per 1 second. Jin Wu also gets a poison potion that will increase resistance to physical damage. In exchange, the strength decreases by 35%. Jin Wu will not consume this potion because it is too dangerous. Not long after, the instant dungeon disappeared and Jin Wu came out of the station carrying Kim's sword. Then there was one of the military soldiers who approached Jin Wu. Realizing that Jin Wu was a hunter, the soldier immediately took Jin Wu to the battle area between the hunters and the boss. After finding out about the dungeon break situation from the soldiers, Jin Wu saw Ju He who was taking part in a raid there. Ju He looks like she daydreams a lot and is too scared to take part in this battle. Jin Wu understands the feelings of trauma Ju He is experiencing. Because of this, he had to immediately help the other hunters. The hunters there had a hard time fighting the rock boss because it had a very strong shield. Difficult to be penetrated by E rank or D rank hunters. Jin Wu analyzed that the rock boss was probably D rank and should be weaker than the poisonous snake boss he defeated previously. Then Jin Wu decided to destroy the rock boss's shield with just Kim's sword. He didn't want to appear conspicuous in the eyes of others. After the rock boss was defeated by the hunters, a tank there noticed a sword thrown by someone he didn't know. Most likely he was in a rank or S rank hunter. The tank tried to ask one of the soldiers, but Jin Wu had already left there first. Of course, this made the tank tremble because hunters B rank and above were busy conquering other gates that had recently appeared in the city. For days, weeks, or even months, Jin Wu continued to carry out his daily quests, and his physique had transformed. This Giga Chad became the talk among the nurses there. They never expected Jin Wu to have such a handsome face. Moreover, when Jin Wu was exercising, stripping off his shirt, his sexy muscles captivated and enamored the nurses. Some nurses even regretted not realizing Jin Wu's handsomeness since the beginning of his stay at the hospital. Today is Jin Wu's last day at the hospital, and his body condition has completely recovered. A nurse, captivated by Jin Wu's handsomeness and gallantry, took the opportunity to ask for his phone number. Jin Wu then gave his number, thinking that the nurse might provide some health reports. His thoughts were truly innocent. Not only the nurses, but Jin Ah was also surprised after seeing Jin Wu, who had truly matured. Jin Ah smiled beautifully seeing her brother develop like that. After Jin Ah left for school, Jin Wu sought a dungeon raid to earn money again. He actually wanted to raise his rank to get better raids. But if he did that, many hunters would be surprised because only Jin Wu could gradually raise his rank in each battle. He didn't want to attract attention and would remain an E-rank hunter. Then Jin Wu found a raid dungeon offer suitable for him as an E-rank hunter. The party leader was named Huang Dong Suk. Dong Suk's friends recognized Jin Wu because he was the weakest hunter number one. But Dong Suk told his friends to keep their mouths shut as it was impolite. 
Yang Suk said he was greatly helped by Jin Wu's presence in the party. To enter the C-rank dungeon, a party needed a minimum of 8 members. If the party had fewer than 8 members, they were prohibited from entering the C-rank dungeon. Dong Suk tasked Jin Wu with carrying the party members' items. Also, in the contract agreement, they couldn't give away the magic stones they hunted. But Dong Suk would pay Jin Wu later. Then Jin Wu didn't see a healer there. Dong Suk said that their party had difficulty finding a healer, so they always raided like this. After Jin Wu signed his contract, he saw a man wearing expensive gear, Jin Ho, D-rank hunter. Jin Ho introduced himself to Jin Wu and promised to protect him. Then they entered the C-rank dungeon there and began to explore the deserted dungeon. Initially, they were a bit confused because it was unusual for a dungeon to be this empty. Jin Wu analyzed the situation because there was some movement of monsters there. Then Jin Wu informed them that this dungeon had insect-type monsters. There were many large holes in the dungeon walls, and they didn't know from which direction the monsters would come. But Jin Wu could sense that the monsters would attack them from above. Jin Wu's intuition sharpened thanks to the game system he obtained. Jin Wu saw that this party had good cooperation and was used to raiding without a healer. But Jin Wu felt something was strange because of their fighting style. He also warned Jin Ho to be cautious with this party. After the monsters were killed, Dong Suk thanked Jin Wu for helping them locate the monsters. Then one of Dong Suk's friends said he found some monsters with different attack marks. It's possible some of the monsters were already dead and were carried by other monster groups. With this situation, there might be higher level monsters in this dungeon. Because of that, they began to explore the dungeon deeper. Jin Wu was still thinking about the strange feeling he suspected from this party. Then they reached the boss room filled with mana crystals. Of course, they were very happy because they could earn a lot of money this time. Then Jin Ho wanted to make sure about his contract and Jin Wu to Dong Suk. In the contract agreement, they didn't give away magic stones and would pay in cash. This meant that the mana crystals could also be divided between Jin Wu and Jin Ho later. Dong Suk said he would definitely share the mana crystals with Jin Wu and Jin Ho later. Then Jin Wu's suspicion grew as Dong Suk instructed Jin Wu and Jin Ho to guard the boss room. Currently, the boss was sleeping there, and their proper equipment was left in the car. Dong Suk and his friends wanted to fetch the equipment momentarily. If they defeated the boss first, the gate would close, and they wouldn't have time to take the mana crystals there. Of course, Jin Ho was surprised to hear that, but Dong Suk assured them that nothing would happen later. In Jin Wu's mind, he was analyzing what Dong Suk meant. This party didn't need a healer, but only needed extra people to meet the requirements of a C-rank dungeon raid. Dong Suk also said they always fought like this. Always meant they were very experienced in going to see rank dungeons with only 6 people and 2 foreign hunters. Dong Suk also didn't provide a concrete reason for not bringing a healer. So where did the additional 2 hunters go all this time? On the other hand, suddenly Dong Suk instructed his friend to use magic to close the entrance to the boss room there. Jin Wu's suspicion turned out to be true, and Jin Ho was very upset because Dong Suk betrayed him and Jin Wu. Inside the dungeon, hunters were free to do anything because they weren't supervised by the association. There weren't even cameras to record the activities of the hunters inside the dungeon. Due to the noise of the rocks just now, the boss there woke up, and Jin Ho would try to protect Jin Wu. However, Jin Wu decided to tell Jin Ho to move away to the back. Jin Wu would fight the boss alone because it was his prey. Oh,